All right. Hey, friends. How you doing? How's everybody doing? Um, man. Um, I don't know when this video is going to go out, but it's it's been a great day. Um, I've had a chance to uh, just not have to go into work. Not, it was 20 today, and I didn't have to go in. It was We were going to be freezing, but we just kind of cut it off yesterday. We got that concrete in, and we just decided, you know, Christmas Eve day, we're just going to reload, re-energize, and... and did it back on Monday. Um, I uh, got to do some stuff today um, with axes, which I, I've been looking at them an awful lot and doing a lot of thinking and working on handles, but I've really been, I haven't been able to get out and look at my axes. I spend a lot of time out here thinking, not only about axes, but just other things in general. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about, um, yeah, let's just talk axes for a little while. Um, and, you know, all things uh, axe, shall we say. Um, I mainly wanted to cover uh, axe abuse. And I know that sounds, I know that sounds uh, silly, but it's definitely real. And it's not funny. Um, you'll see axe heads with the old mushrooming where somebody wants to turn it into a, a wedge and uh, it, it's unfortunate that people I mean it, it's abuse it's straight up abuse of a tool that's not what it was designed for um, you know go buy a seven dollar wedge or go on marketplace and buy one for four dollars use a wedge and a sledgehammer um, there are instances where you do hit the X, like when you're arriving, but most of those uh, uh, malls are wood um, made out of tree stump and a, and a handle. So it, it's quite, it takes quite a bit to uh, deal with it. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, it's easiest just to pass on the ax head, um, unless it's something that you really want. Um, and this is the case with this one, um, which I will, uh, I'm also going to post the footage. This one, um, had an enormous mushroom on it and I'm not quite done with it. I am going to leave the rust on it, but you can see the mushrooming on this was enormous. This was 4.9 pounds, almost five pounds. And it's probably four, six, four, seven, somewhere in there now. I ground quite a bit off of it. I flattened this again. Um, and um, Rockaway pattern, not a Rockaway, a uh, Jersey pattern. Um, and I think it's, I mean, I, I put it next to this Keach, and I think it's a racer. So, um, interesting. Um, it's got a great splitting profile. Uh, actually, better than the Keach. So, um, this is going to end up as a, uh, a test axe for handles um, to push them to the limit, to push the curves to the limit, and see, you know, how we. How I have to proceed with the curves. Here's where the curves are at right now. This is a four and a half, probably less than four and a half high test Tasmanian pattern um, that came from Australia. And uh, um, <laughs> I messed up my glasses there. We're throwing it on a curve. Um, grain seems to be right on this as much as it can be from a straight board and we're down where we want to be and so now we're working on and everything is pretty much you can always go thinner with this but I'm going to start this is about an inch and a half and this is actually true to uh, the picture that I scaled it off of so these dimensions are 
I mean, I can always make it thinner. I can't put wood back on it, but I'm gonna work on the palm swell on this and try and make it more ergonomic um, so that it will uh, have more of a, uh, more of this kind of thing. Um, so, that's just kind of, you know, the, I just kind of always wonder, I mean, this was smushed. This is actually a lot better, way better. But these, if you can see this mark across here, that's how much that was convex on both sides. And I took it up to my friend's uh, shop. He has a 10 ton um, electric hydraulic press and I took a piece of steel and uh, carefully reformed the eye on this puppy. Yeah, look at that. You're coming back to life, baby. Bit of time, a little bit of time. I know she's getting there. A little bit there.
I may have to get me one of these free. They, I guess they make smaller versions of this. Oh, one. these? Oh, yeah. Did you build this yourself pretty much or? Yeah. Um, as best I could. And then I took it back to my shop and started with 30 grit and ended up with about, I think 150 here. This is 150 so far. Reshape the pole and um, get the rust backed off the edge. Um, probably Saturday I'll take a wire brush to it and wire brush it and um, either soak it in motor oil or WD-40. So um, where we're at with this we'll probably end up putting blue tape on this. I always blue tape these edges because otherwise these uh, these cuts start showing up on your fingers. Duct tape whatever it takes to cover it up. Um, but uh, so it 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 uh, it's it's come out good. It's come out well. Um, I think somebody tried to drill this out, and I don't know if you can see that inside there. Um, yeah, that. I think somebody tried to drill that out, the old handle out, and uh, put a gouge on the inside of the eye. Um, but uh, yeah. So I think we're, we're doing, we're doing pretty well with it. It's on the road to recovery, but, uh, you know, right tool for the job, I think is, is really the, the, the key thing. Um, really, you know, it just, it saddens me to see some of these old buttes just banged up and messed up, you know? Um, but anyway, uh, we got it pressed out. Um, I've got a, one little last thing to do with the eye die grinder. I'm sure we've all seen one of these. And uh, I got I got on Amazon. I got some uh, tungsten carbide, solid carbide bits for it, and they are really nice. This is uh, this is about a four and a half pounder that is just a split machine. And this eye was in crooked. Um, I actually think they put the uh, drift in the wrong way. Not sure what happened, but this this eye was uh, shifted this way instead of it being, you know, straight up or, you know, flared going from smaller to larger. But you can see reshaping this eye what's had to happen. I think this eye stopped right at about the bottom of my pinky there. So uh, there's been quite a bit removed on this guy. Um, what was happening is I was, I was experimenting with my curves. Um, the the uh, eye on the handle was so small and the weight of the head was just snapping it off right at the uh, right at, at the junction of the bottom of the axe and the handle. So um, that uh, had to change and um, thought about taking it to a blacksmith, but um, if I was, I reasoned that if I was a blacksmith, I wouldn't even accept the work. So, anyway. Uh, so anyway, we were successful at regrinding the eye, and even um, I actually started hafting it on this, and then I decided not to, um, just because this. I just as on a whim I put this Tazzy on here and it started going down better than that one. And I thought, you know what? Uh, I think so. Somebody's trying to tell me something. So we're going to go with it. Um, this guy, it's going to go on something similar to this, but with a, a, a more uh, intricate palm swell. 
But anyway, um, this is going to go on something similar as well. Um, something in about the 32 inch, gonna finish out maybe a 20, somewhere between 27 and 29 inches from the bottom of the head to the um, butt of the, of the handle. Um, but uh, this is a little bit of a ways off, but yeah, these, these uh, getting back to these uh, die grinders, you know, you see that little lip in there. You can just that fast. So we're just flushing that mushroom bit. Somebody again took a hammer and mushroomed this inner edge of the eye basically just wanted to show you what's up with those bits they're really helpful and they're not expensive but uh, they really help um, when you need to trim stuff on these axe heads and this is actually a five piece set different shapes for different parts of the eye it's really nifty um, so anyway we're gonna we're gonna continue cleaning this guy up and um, you'll see him on an axe. I'm really pleased at the way. I mean, this thing was literally squatted. You can just imagine how, well, you'll see it. You'll see it in the video. You just have to look real closely at the beginning where it's, when it's sitting in the press, um, just how squatted it is. Um, but, uh, so really that's, uh, that's, that's it for now. Um, I've got more axe stuff coming. Um, it doesn't look like we're going to get much snow. We're not going to have a white Christmas, that's for sure. Um, but uh, we're going to use this uh, downtime to get some content out, get some other stuff organized, um, do some yard work, hang out with my family and my dogs, and um, just try to relax and, uh, and move forward in a positive way. It's been an unbelievable year. So, anyway... Thank you all, subscribers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, Healed Heart, new subscriber. Talked to you a million times on the live feeds. Um, thanks for popping in. Uh, Billy from Philly is hanging out a little bit. That's freaking amazing and cool. Um, all the usual suspects, Treefella, Tasman, Pilk, Lord Mark is part that popped in. <laughs> um, who else? Uh, just a lot of people. Um, it's really hard for me to remember names. So, you know, I can just say thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, Cosmic, as always, rocking the cool vibes from Georgia. Um, 906, it's been, it's been great. I love getting your texts and uh, I love the chatting and we'll get, I'll get to work on the handles ASAP. Um, what else? Um, obviously I'm going to pop in um, more. So anyway, I just wanted to wish you all a Merry Christmas. 
and um, we have a lot of work to do. This community has a lot of work to do. You know, we've got so many good people involved in this community and happy and pushing forward with good ideas and good intentions. And it's really just an honor to be around you all and to be a part of what all of this is. Um, so anyway, take it easy. Have a wonderful Christmas Eve and have a wonderful Christmas day. And um, I'll catch you soon. Take it easy.